What's up everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to be recreating this thumbnail that I made for a previous video on the channel. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, you comment below, and you subscribe. I've been hounded for the last two years to make an updated one, so here it is. Let's get right into it. We can smoke this Speed it on the sunset, strip in the nighttime, yeah, trying to get fucked up. I'm gonna try my best to make it look exactly like this, if not a little bit similar to this. So what I do when I open Photoshop is I'll go file, new, I open up a 1920 by 1080 document size, the resolution I have on 300, RGB color, 8-bit, I don't really think any of that matters, it's just gonna be a little thumbnail. So 1920 by 1080, create, it's gonna open up a blank document. So there's a few things that I will bring into every thumbnail that I do, which is gameplay, my face, and either a weapon or a character. So I actually have a thumbnail pack on my desktop where I funnel all those things into before I create my thumbnail. So we're gonna bring those in right now. I'm gonna drag them in. So we got the gameplay photo, we got the photo of the character, we got those anime lines that everybody uses in their thumbnails, as well as the photo of myself. So what we will do first is we'll unclick everything. Um, I will duplicate the game layer because I'm going to cut the gun out of it, as well as the feed right here. Uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut myself out of this image right here. If you guys have not used the pen tool before, it's really not that hard. You click and you drag you click and you drag. If you need to make a hard turn with the pen tool, you hold Alt and click on the last point and you can make like a 90 degree turn. It's really not that bad. So again, click, click, click. You need to make a 90 degree turn after making a curve. Hold Alt, click on the last nub. There you go. So once I do that, you guys see the blue outline. I connect it to the other end that I started with. I'll go make selection, control C, control V. That hasn't changed from the last time I've made a thumbnail. I'll go in again and cut out all of the stuff that I couldn't get to. Make selection, delete, oh, wrong layer. Delete, hold the space bar to drag and click your screen around pen tool out this. This makes me so mad when I see people's gaming thumbnails and they have like the inside of their headset not cut out. I don't know why it's just like a little pet peeve of mine. I will never understand it, but it exists. Right, so we have myself right here. I'm going to move myself over here. I like to make myself prominent in the thumbnails. Um, I don't know why. I just feel like they're more attention grabbing if my face is in them. Just something like I probably, I think nine times out of ten personally, I do not click on a thumbnail unless there isn't like a face in the thumbnail. Whether it be a cartoon character or it's the person in the video, I probably won't click it unless there's a face in it. I don't know, that's just me. My laundry's done, lol. Alright, next step, the jet in the corner. Alright, so next we're gonna do the feed in the corner with the triple here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just literally pen tool this out. Each layer individually, like each kill individually, I'll go make selection. Control C, wrong layer again. Control C, Control V. Next one, make selection, Control C, and again, wrong layer. Control C, Control V, third one. Make sure I'm on the right layer this time. Make selection, control C, control V, and now we have all these three, which is the feed. From here, I'll probably just fire them into a folder so I can keep them organized. But for the gun, we're going to pen to load that now. I don't know, I feel like the gun's a pretty key point into this clip here, so that's why it's in there. Same thing, make selection, control C, control V. Now continue pen tooling out the places that have the background on it still. 
You could probably find images of these weapons online. However, I always pull from my video unless there's one that looks exactly like what I had in my video. And by the time I find the gun or whatever I'm looking for, it would have literally have been faster just to pen tool it out. So most of the time, I just do it myself. Let's do the background. So I do this all the time. This is like, I've always done this with my backgrounds. I'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'll just blur it out. Mine's set to 10. I'm guessing that's what I had on the last thumbnail that I created. So I'll do that. Um, if you guys notice around the edges, there's kind of like this light effect. That's because it's blurring out. If you just copy that background layer before you blur it and then enable it, that goes away if it bugs you. I don't really notice it, but sometimes it bugs me. But that's what I do to the background. I also will go control U. I'll crank the saturation just a little bit. I found that people click on more vibrant thumbnails over the last few years of doing YouTube. And then from there, I'll actually take the lightness down. So whatever I do in the front of the background pops out more. So I'll crank the saturation and then make the lightness a little bit darker. So my face, the weapon, the feed, everything else kind of just is more in your face. All right, so I feel like my gun in the thumbnail needs to move over a little bit. So I'm gonna move it over. I do have the character Jet here because that's the character I was playing. That's the character that I've been learning the most. So I'll bring her in, I'll move her here and then drag her below the weapon. You guys don't have to do what I'm doing, but this is just how I created this thumbnail. And uh, if it looks too busy, you literally don't have to add the weapon. You don't have to add her. You can literally just have the feet, the gun, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to move these a bit closer to each other. Now I'm going to duplicate the folder, merge group, convert to smart object. Now I'm going to scale it up quite big and then kind of like this. It's above me, so I'm going to move myself down here. And it's below jet and below the weapon. Okay, cool. There we go. Now to add the effects, the drop shadows, the anime lines, all that fun stuff, as well as the, did I say text? The text, we're gonna add some text now. Okay. So the title of the video was that's so lucky or something along those lines. So I'm gonna go caps lock. That was, and then I'm gonna do another text layer. That was so lucky. So I got my text here, both two layers, cause sometimes I'll change the font on the second layer and sometimes I won't, but that is the text. Sometimes I'll change the color on the first layer. Sometimes I won't. In this case I did. All right, so I did save these as presets, the layer styles. So that was, is this blue one, cause that's what Valorant colors are kind of like as well as this red one here it's all i did for the text nothing special i already had these saved and they just happened to work perfectly so i'm just gonna move that together what i'm gonna do to the gun is i'm gonna go inner glow inner glow put it on overlay and make the opacity 100 and tweak the size as you guys can see the edges just kind of pop a little bit more and if you add a drop shadow it just kind of brings it up to the front a little bit more add a little bit of a drop shadow there all right now moving on to jet i'm just gonna give her a drop shadow nothing crazy drop shadow on jet um the feed i did the same thing i did inner glow it's overlay 100 percent and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a drop shadow as well. Drop shadows and inner glows go so far, just make sure not to overdo it. <laughs> I'll do the same thing to myself. I'll give myself a drop shadow, but what I did differently to myself than I did with the gun and the feed is I gave myself a stroke. A stroke, uh, that sounded weird. I changed the opacity to zero, so you can still see the stroke outline, but it's a little bit like less, more subtle, if you know what I mean. So you can see the outline looking cool, looking sick. Um, also what I'll do is if I have acne, I'll actually just fucking Photoshop it out. No cap here. And I've been struggling with acne, so your girl be Photoshopping out her pimples. <laughs> I'm 
No shame. No shame. Makes me feel good. Now moving on to the anime bars. People hate this and they think it's super cringy, but I personally love the way this looks. I don't know why. I've seen it on thumbnails so much, but I absolutely love it. So I'm not going to stop using it. But you put that black screen with the anime lines on it and you turn it to screen and then it kind of shows through. I'm going to rasterize it and now erase points that are too much. So for example, over my face, I don't want that. So I'm going to go like that. Don't want it going over my face. And then from here, probably over top of the text, I'll get rid of that. And then if you still want some of it, but you want the opacity, just change the opacity of the paintbrush before you erase to a lower opacity. And then I think I'm going to put this actually below the gun and below jet. So you can still see it, but it's not like as in your face. There you go. You can see it behind the gun. Like it, it's still there, but it's not like, wow, so in your face, so cringy, you know? Shift. Click the first layer while you're holding shift, click the bottom layer and you select all your layers. I will drag them, make a copy. I will then merge all of those layers. So if I deselect everything here, all the eyeballs, you guys can see that everything is on one layer. I will crop it. Everything will get cut out of that. So then if you go to crop it again, there's nothing on the outside edges. And that makes a lot of sense for what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go filter, magic bullet, looks. If you have all that stuff on the outside of the square, I guess, um, the rectangle, the, the canvas, that's the word I'm looking for, um, it'll actually apply all the effects to that as well and it'll make it kind of weird. But these are the settings that I normally lose, use on my magic bullet. Uh, I'm not going to change it, but I have chromatic aberration and diffusions off for this one. Anamorphic flare, lens distortion, color reversal, and chromatic aberration. If you have magic bullet and you want to use these settings, I just go in there and tweak them every single time to what I see is fit. So you guys could copy all of this, but the settings inside, just do your own thing. Honestly, that's the best way to learn. But that's what I'll do in magic bullet. I'll hit finished and then it'll apply the effects in a second here. And there you go. The thumbnail is completed. Um, I love it. I love the way that it makes it look. That's how I make my thumbnails. I'm sorry if this tutorial was all over the place and really fast or jumbled, whatever the case may be. I haven't made a tutorial in a very long time and I'm kind of rusty. So hopefully this is something you guys can use to your advantage and learn from how I make my thumbnails. And if you guys want to see a slowed down, more in-depth version, maybe a Call of Duty style thumbnail, let me know in the comments below, as well as let me know if you want a different game style, whatever the case may be, drop it in the comments, drop a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.